Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Martin, are you there? Are any of us really here, Tim? <laughs> yeah, that's very, I would say... Got uh, you thinking already? Uh... Nietzschean of you, nihilistic. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, hey, didn't you get the memo that uh, November is next month? Uh, yes, no, this is my uh, my standard kit now. I am approaching middle age. I can grow a moustache, so why not? Aren't you? I believe that I'm older than you. Oh, I mean, you certainly look it. <laughs> well, thank you. Zing! <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm accepting middle age, you know, I've got a few grey hairs coming on, and, uh... uh... Did you hear that the latest in the, uh, the, the, the trans, or, or, or should I day, say campaign to abolish gender, is now women can grow moustaches for November? Hey, if it's raising money for prostate cancer, whatever, man. I think, like... uh, women can still get prostate, prostate cancer. Do women have a prostate? Well, trans women do. Uh, well, because trans right. men can get periods. Because did you see the new ads where it has the trans boys having tampons? I haven't seen that. It's, it's just also very um, exciting, isn't it? We're just in this exciting age of change. Huh. Just embrace it, I say. <laughs> just honk honk. <laughs> We've got a dedicated uh, trans madness update uh, at the the end of the show, but I'm sure, Martin, you've been following this new uh, Australian Press Freedom uh, campaign uh, that was launched this week by all the, the major media uh, corporations and the the official journalists uh, union, the, the MEAA, about your right yeah. to know. I had a good uh, bitch with uh, my New Zealand counterpart, uh, Dewey DeBoer, last night about how hypocritical it is because they don't care about our free speech as ordinary citizens or the the alt media's uh, freedom uh, of the press but as soon as two of their journalists uh, get uh, raided uh, because they publish national security leaks then oh where fr uh, freedom is is under attack well where were you yeah it is pretty hypocritical but if that's what it takes then i guess it's good that they're finally waking up, but they'll forget about it soon enough, as soon as the pressure's off them. They don't seem to care about, it. yeah, unless unless it affects them. <laughs> well, they want special rights, and it's been good that Scott Morrison has said in response to this uh, campaign, no one's uh, above the law, while Labor has said that, yes, journalists should be exempt from, I don't think he quite said that they should be exempt from all national security laws. Which is, would be quite incredible because the rest of us would have to abide by national security laws except for journalists. Yeah, and what defines a journalist? Yes, uh, exactly. They, like, like, I'm doing some study about that, actually. I'm working on a critical essay about that at the moment. It's um, is like on the topic of citizen journalism. Um, and some people scoff at the term, but citizen journalism is legit. You can... The only difference is professional journalists get paid for it. And a lot of professional journalists who leave those main, mainstream news outlets then go on to become, to work for citizen journalist outlets. Yeah, so, become um, freelancers themselves. They set up their, their own YouTube channel. Like when Bill O'Reilly was fired from Fox News, he was like, I'll just set up my own YouTube channel and podcast The No Spin Zone. And he's still around. You'd still consider him a, a journalist. Yeah, um, and I think the sort of uh, one of the other things I'm, I'm I'm going to be writing about in the essay is the tendency for mainstream media outlets to become mouthpieces for official outlets like the police, government, the military, because there's this um, symbiotic relationship between um, when the, they get this drip of information that they can then just copy paste make an article easy it's done they don't have to apply critical thought or um, or anything like that. Because they've got to be, you know, avoid bias, um, and sometimes, sometimes you want a little bit of analysis, or you want an angle. Um, it's just a matter of whether or not you 
like you have to make it obvious people 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 are pretty clued on now institutional trust in the media is at record lows and it has been in, in decline since the 80s um so uh, mainstream media outlets are they're going out of business their 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 profit margins are decreasing and um you know outlets like ours we don't have to worry about that you know we've got day jobs so um we do provide a valuable public service in that um people can come to us if there's a story that the mainstream media either you know doesn't want to publish for whatever reasons we don't have sponsors that can then pull the rug out from under us and say oh you can't say that that damages our brand or they're, they're, they're not uh, influenced by government grants or, or other things. Because we also exactly. talked about on, on Trans Tasman Talk last night, uh, because it was the Canadian election night, so I watched uh, Rebel News' uh, live stream uh, over, over on their uh, channel, uh, which was hosted by their uh, Rebel commander, uh, Ezra Levent. And because well, he is a pretty cashed up uh, alt media personality, he's decided to focus just on reporting in Canada now. They don't have this global presence that they, they once did. And so uh, their uh, reporters have been out and about uh, on the, the, the campaign trail in Canada uh, ask, trying to ask politicians uh, questions and and follow uh, stories, and they've all uh, they did a montage uh, at the end of their 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 coverage about uh, our politicians would refuse to answer their questions because they wouldn't consider them real journalists or you're not part of the uh, uh, the official press pack, the, the existing press pack, because they were blacklisted not just by the politicians, but by the existing mainstream media. And uh, one of their uh, reporters, uh, David the Menzoid Menzies, he went up to the Conservative uh, Party leader, uh, Andrew Shearer, and asked him, do you support free speech? He was arrested and handcuffed and driven across town. Yeah, it's... Um... What, what makes a journalist? Mm. You know, it's um, the, the traditional role of, of journalism is to be the fourth estate. But you could argue that uh, that is, is uh, less the case now. Um, and certainly in Australia, we have um, our press freedom index is actually not that great. It's not that great at all. Mm. So um, it's questionable, you know, whether they are performing their, their role as the fourth estate now. Um, Yes, they are like, well, for a case in point, you look at the ABC raids. Um, yeah, you could argue that they reported on something that was um, against um, national security regulations, sure. Um, but then so was WikiLeaks. And I've, uh, you know, I'm, I have a soft spot for WikiLeaks because I think if, if that, you know, if we, if we don't have the ability for whistleblowers to come out, that's a dangerous. That's a dangerous precedent so that we're setting. I think we have to stand up for whistleblowers, even if we don't necessarily agree um, with what they've said. Um, if people die as a result of something a whistleblower says, then then yeah, there should be consequences for that. Um, but I've been watching like Julian Assange, right? He can't even say his own friggin' name in the courtroom. He's he's like they've they've tortured him to the extent that such an intelligent, bright uh, young man is 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 basically a zombie at this point. That breaks my heart. Like, I love that guy. He's he's an inspiration to me, like massively inspiration to me. What I've said is that it's called this campaign, Your Right to Know, but it's only your right to know what we want to tell you or how we choose to tell you. And there's been three uh, case in points because uh, it's been in the, the news, both in uh, Australia and the United States, the, the persecution of Patriot uh, activists, uh, because uh, here in uh, Victoria, uh, Blair Crotchrell, probably Australia's most well-known patriot activist, he's finally got a, a new uh, trial uh, date for his appeal against his uh, blasphemy conviction, which was uh, recorded in September uh, 2017. This was uh, under the Victoria's Racial and Religious uh, Tolerance Act, uh, where he, Neil Erickson and Christopher Shortus uh, were charged over a, a 2015 mock beheading video that was published to Facebook outside the, the Bendigo Town Hall when they were protesting the construction of the, the local mosque uh, there, which has only just broken ground uh, back in June. Daniel Andrews 
was there at the time to put the, the shovel in the ground and gave $400,000 of Victorian taxpayers money towards the construction of the mosque. And so uh, the, the Bendigo Three, as they were known, they were, their prosecution was announced early in 2017. Then at the same time, uh, the United Patriots Front was uh, deleted from Facebook. Uh, and the, the trial took place at the, the Melbourne Magistrates Court. They represented themselves. It lasted for, I think, two or three days. The, the trial and yes though they, they were found uh, guilty so uh, Blair Cottrell is the 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 one who decided to uh, appeal his conviction he employed the services of uh, Patriot lawyer John Bolton uh, they wanted to originally appeal uh, on the the basis of Australia's constitutional implied right to freedom of political communication so they lodged an application with the high court the high court said you've got to go through all the other appeal courts before you get to us and so they're redirected to, towards the the county court of Victoria so there are a number of mentions throughout the first half of 2018 and uh, then the the state uh, attorney general Jill Hennessy decided to get involved in the appeal to safeguard the racial and religious Tolerance Act because uh, we've got to protect against uh, hate speech to ensure community uh, cohesion. Uh, but then they discovered that uh, the act might conflict with the Victoria's Charter of Human Rights and uh, Responsibility. And so that became a, a, sec a separate matter of uh, the the county court trial was now going to decide both uh, constitutional law and state law. So it was going to be heard by Judge uh, Lisa Hannon in a 10-day trial beginning August 12th, uh, but she received a promotion to be the Chief Magistrate of the Victorian Magistrates Court, and so she could no longer uh, hear the case. So it's been rescheduled for to begin on November the 11th, and it'll be heard by the, the Chief Justice of the, the County Court of Victoria, uh, Peter Kidd, who he recently presided over uh, George Pell's uh, trial uh, and uh, jury uh, conviction on historical child uh, sexual abuse uh, charges in the, the, the 90s and uh, sentenced him to, to six years in prison. That was appealed to Victoria's Court of Appeal. They upheld, and so George Pell's now going to the, uh, the High Court. That certainly is a lot of words. Mm. Well, there's a lot oh. of background to it. Yeah. Um, best of luck to Blair. Um, yeah, I think that that case has wider implications than just the um, the impact that that will have on him. So, um, but really, I think a lot of people have been saying this uh, for a long time. We need an actual Bill of Rights in Australia. Um, we don't really have that. And so we have to sort of fall back on human rights stuff. And, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to get into the legalities. Um, but yeah, that's something that I've heard a lot of people say from all political walks of life. We need a um, like a Bill of Rights. It's probably too late for Australia to adopt a, a Bill of Rights in the, the manner that it's worked in the, the United States because that protects their First Amendment, protects all speech unless it's an immediate uh, incitement uh, to violence and when i say it protects all speech i mean all speech so po hardcore pornographic movies are protected under the the first amendment it's for speech you agree and uh, disagree with it it doesn't doesn't favor one type of speech over the other but what most people suspect if we were to have tried to have a constitutional amendment in australia to protect free speech the lefties would get control of it and instead of it being a, a negative right they'd try to turn it into a a positive right which means that uh, the, the the government uh, grants you privileges while a negative right is this is what the government can't do yeah um well, even if it was still a negative right, um, the issue is the whole uh, free market, right? From a libertarian's perspective, they go, it's the free market. So Facebook, you're on the Facebook platform. It's not a utility. It's not a, it's not a right. You're signing an agreement when you go on Facebook so they can censor whatever they want. Um, well, they, and it's also they... Well, at the moment, they argue they're a platform, not a publisher, even though they act like a publisher and that they choose what can be published under their community uh, standards. But uh, then there was a, a defamation court ruling in regard to that was brought by Dylan Voller, who was the 
the Aboriginal youth offender, that uh, news companies were liable for Facebook comments uh, underneath their stories, even though those comments are published on Facebook, not on the news websites themselves. Yeah, well, it cuts both ways. Um, they got screwed. Um, they can probably afford to fight it, but um, poor political posting mama, right? Yes. Yeah, plug to her. Go donate money to her if you can, because that's BS what happened to her. Uh, a little bit of background, political posting mama during the um, marriage equality plebiscite, let's just call it that, whatever. Moving on. Um, she, someone made, she, she had a post about uh, an individual and somebody on that post made a vilifying statement. And uh, because it, it wasn't, she didn't adequately moderate it, uh, adequately moderate the comments, she lost a lawsuit and had to pay one hundred thousand dollars. Yes, that's to correct. This person and she's she's just a household mum. You know that's their that's that's a lot of money for for anybody really. Um, so it's it's only really by donations that she's able to keep a roof over her family's heads. So she's got around, to crazy. my knowledge, four or five children. She's got. A large family, I'll summarise that uh, like that. So she has been nice. relative. She's still got her Facebook page, but she's been relatively quiet. Uh, I did run into her at the the March for the Babies, and she said oh, I did publish a, a Facebook video uh, just uh, this week. I'm planning to um, make a bit of a comeback uh, with with videos. So that's yeah, we'll brave. we'll we'll, we'll really? see how she goes. I, I yeah, that's very brave considering. Uh, <laughs> what she's been through but um yeah i mean if you when you when you believe in something that's kind of hard to just you know just go and live a normal life um but yeah props for black for bravery hmm. of course uh, uh mariki rancy she's been crowdfunding online which is what uh, blair was doing with his uh appeal legal expenses he was originally receiving donations through paypal uh his yeah. paypal was frozen in december 2018 so he then got his supporters to donate directly to his westpac uh, personal bank account and then in june this year that got shut down as well and then we've learned recently that anz bank is uh shutting down a whole bunch of uh, patriots uh bank accounts uh, as well with not specifying a reason other than we have the authority to do so Mm. Sorry, um, yeah, I just got a bit distracted there. Yes, yeah, so the, the, the Patriots... Uh... Yeah, the bank account's being cancelled, right? That's some, that's some Mark of the Beast type stuff. I saw Thomas Brasher pointed out, like, Book of Revelation, man. Unless you got the Mark of the Beast, you can't buy or sell. Hmm. That's, um... Oh, no, they're banks. They, you know, they have the right to, to, to do business or not do business with whomever they, they please, but... You know, what employer is going to hire a person if no bank will offer them their services and they have to accept cash in hand? Hmm? What happens when they um, when they eventually abolish cash and we go to a completely digital society? How are people going to exchange goods and services if they become a political dissident? Exactly. Um, and where's a, the, the mainstream media uh, reporting on, on this uh, scandalous action uh, by the banks? Uh, because... Uh, of course, uh, uh, when Blair was interviewed on, on Sky News uh, around about June 2018, uh, he, uh, the, the, the network apologised. Uh, Adam Giles, he essentially had his program eventually uh, cancelled. And so no, now no mainstream media outlet will grant him uh, an interview. Otherwise, they'll be accused of giving him a platform. Right. But it's interesting, still, the, the mainstream media uh, reporters, they can't uh, st can't they can't stop helping themselves to report uh, on his uh, case, but it's always they, uh, whenever they can, they uh, uh, they describe him as a uh, neo-Nazi, white supremacist, criminal, and News Corp. Uh, they they publish. They, they uh, have a, it's like they have a script whenever yes. they report on him. They, unless they say those bad things about him, they don't report on him, or else they'll be accused of of somehow supporting him. And Can't news, be neutral. yes, News Corp. Uh, they e even if the story is not about him, just about Australian nationalism. They've got this pho Photoshop photo of him standing in front of on on what flag, yeah, yeah swastika and the Australian flag. He never stood in front of a Nazi flag. It's it's photoshopped, but 
they apparently think that they, they it's okay to do this and that they'll get away with it. They have so far. Mm. Um, maybe, may, maybe when Blair's done with this whole Bendigo thing, maybe he should chase that up. Well, he's thought about it, but he's just it's... a working class man. It's been big enough to uh, a big enough effort for him to take on the the state yeah, government. Absolutely, absolutely. But they shouldn't be able to get away with stuff like that. Um, it's but they know they can because they've got enough. Um, they've managed to whip up enough of a narrative surrounding him. Hmm that uh it's only a small percentage of people that would point out well oh, actually that's a bit wrong you shouldn't do that but well, he's a political dissident that's what happens mm. don't don't step out of line don't criticize the system man well all the mainstream journalists uh they have twitter accounts and i remember if they published articles about uh blair or neil erickson or other members of the united patrons front or lad society or any of those groups uh it, there were always about 20 twitter replies saying you didn't describe them as neo-nazi criminal uh people you've got to correct this so you only got 250 uh, characters or whatever <laughs> but yeah they, yeah they they basically got you you should call it they got bullied to uh cyber bully to to change uh their stories to, to make sure that they describe these patriots as the, the worst people in Australia. Yes, there's uh, certainly a lot of uh, herd mentality and over socialization among the far left elements of the Australian media, which is, I might add, the majority of the Australian media. Now, I continue to put the entropy link uh, in the, the chat, uh, so please join us uh, over there. I'm going to design a, a poll question. Uh, you can share your thoughts while I type this poll question. Please don't make it about my mustache. It is. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I will not be accepting any feedback regarding my mustache. It stays. Hmm. The last time I shaved my mustache off was for a job. Hmm. First time I did, um, it was for a job where I had to wear, be able to wear a, like a gas mask in case of a, a leak. And the other time was... It was something to do with food handling. It's just so I didn't have to be wear a beard mask. Those things are the worst when you're sweating in them. Um, but now I'm, I'm a student. I have the freedom. I'm growing my mustache. I don't care. What's the old <laughs> joke that uh, hey, you can get bits of food in mustaches and so um, your mustache can end up being sort of like a, a food flavored <laughs> bit of... I don't know about that. I uh, maybe if you're unhygienic, but um, in food handling, like the beard thing is, you know, what if you eat a, uh, a peanut butter sandwich, and then you uh, you blow some sweat, and then airborne peanut particles make its way into the food, gets sent halfway across the world, and some poor kid dies of asphyxiation. That's uh, yeah. People don't really think about all the, all of the regulations and things that go into the manufacturing their food. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of peanut butter sandwiches. I eat them nearly every day. So far, I haven't killed anyone while eating them. Well, you're lucky, I guess. And um, can you imagine? Like, I saw this little. Uh, it's like a Japanese animation. It was about this kid with uh, all these allergies and like how he basically almost died all the time. Poor kid. Is it like egg allergy, or peanut allergy, wheat allergy? Can you imagine living like that? That would be the worst. I'm so grateful that I have my health. Gratitude. Try it out, actually. You know, last year, this time last year, man, my life sucked. Um, but now things are pretty good. you gotta be, you got to be grateful, um, I think. And it does a lot for your, uh, your, like, your mental health, I think. Waking up every day and go, going, I'm so grateful to have a roof over my head be able to feed myself. I'm so grateful that I have a strong body, strong enough anyway. Um, but that's what I've been practicing in my personal life of late. But anyway, back to the news. <laughs> You're still still standing. And what's the old expression? Success is the best uh, revenge against your critics. Yes, some people say that. It's true. Uh, we've got a few votes in our poll. Now I'll tell the know. results at the, at the end of the show. Oh, dear. I can't see the. Uh, oh wait, you've you've shared the link to the. Was it C T C H Entropy. All right. Now on oh, the yes. matter of uh, patriot uh, persecution, it uh, broke uh, overnight uh, that the 
uh, th uh, this has been an ongoing story since the, the incident occurred in October of uh, 2018. The, the New York uh, City chapter of the Proud Boys, they were hearing a speech by uh, their founder, Gavin McGuinness, at the New York uh, Metropolitan uh, Club. And they, of course, were Antifa counter uh, pro protesters. And so they had a police escort on the way out. But six uh, Antifa thugs still managed to, to jump them. And so they acted in, in self-defense. The whole confrontation lasted about five uh, seconds because they realized that everything was safe. And of course, Antifa... Uh, attackers most of the time they're skinny uh, soy boys uh, who <laughs> if they're they're confronted by a, a a real man then that's that's it for them but yeah uh, i don't know I, i've turned into a, a soy consumer now we'll see we'll see if i can still swing a sledgehammer in six months on this diet i'm on i haven't eaten meat in a while actually it's too expensive just to, just to briefly go off topic try swinging a sledgehammer it's great exercise um anyway back to the topic <laughs> so yeah these guys stood up for themselves and but um this was around about the, sa the same time when there was a lot of fake news uh circulating uh, around the uh the proud boys and of course the yep. the southern poverty law center which um one of my previous guests described as the the southern poverty lie center <laughs> they yes. classified the the proud boys as an extremist a group even though they're a libertarian uh, civic nationalist group uh, they reject the the alt-right white uh, nationalism and uh, racism but because they practice uh, toxic masculinity they're uh, they're bad and so they uh, the the spin from the mainstream media that this was a a violent uh, thuggish attack from this uh, far right uh, a men's only group. I think that's when the the, the term far right replaced alt right because you notice that the term alt right's not used anymore. It's always far right. I know the X Y Z guys have a certain way of saying far right, but you need more hyphens in there. Well, there's now also extreme far right that described yep. Fraser Anning's uh, conservative National Party, and then we invented was that super mega ultra extreme far right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Peter V's got a good one here. Soy poverty license. <laughs> <laughs> where's uh, Where's Peter Grace? Why isn't he gracing us with his presence this evening? Well, there's a few accounts that court. claim to be him. Uh, maybe they've just all uh, resting at the moment. But going resting back... his brittle bones. <laughs> But going back to, because we are on a, a deadline uh, tonight, yes. we've got to finish by right. by 8.15pm, otherwise Dia gets uh, cranky and our audience dessert has to go and watch her uh, weekly live stream. Because she's got Gary Hume on tonight, who was one of the, the members of the, the Milo 5, the, the Patriots who are charged for defending okay. themselves uh, outside the, the Milo Yiannopoulos speaking event in December uh, 2017. He's the... He, he, he's... He's got a British accent, but he's 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 a full-blooded Australian patriot. He was one of the uh, the patriots who was on the the steps of Flinders Street with uh, Ricky Turner on Australia Day. Remember when yep. uh, he got he got dragged down and and uh, almost lynched uh, Ricky T for just simply holding the Australian flag on on the on the steps of a major melbourne landmark on australia day and if the police hadn't uh dragged him out of that uh, mob who knows what it w would have happened yeah it's uh similar to how the the cops dragged uh neil erickson away from the that muslim prayer day and they're like oh bloody mate you're lucky we just probably saved your hide you know but are you admitting these people are like not in control of their emotions and are prone to acts of physical violence against people that they don't agree with yeah. well that's before the courts uh, that matter now most recently yeah. neil erickson was uh, uh removed from the extinction rebellion illegal uh protest when they were super gluing themselves to the road because he was breaching the peace of their illegal protest yeah. I mean, if they're committing an illegal protest, aren't they, by definition, already breaching the peace? I mean, those motorists, were, they were pretty pissed off that they were, they were late for work. I don't think they were feeling very peaceful with uh, people supergluing themselves to the road. Mm. Um, I will offer, 
Now, this is my first time sort of coming on the record with this. Now, I do not support salt. I do not support any careful, of that. Careful, careful. Now, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be careful because I'm gonna get people saying that I'm supporting um, Extinction Rebellion. I'm not. However, however, it is a dangerous precedent to be setting in Queensland these new laws that they're trying to pass through. Um, these uh, they, where they've accused them of using. Uh, dangerous um, lockout devices. Or Locking whatever. devices, yeah, like the yeah. the pipes that they're using, where they have to be chainsawed out of them. Yeah, they're they're really. It seems like they're trying to rush this uh, legislation through to be able to make it um, much harder for people to protest. Um, you know, I don't agree with what they're doing or how they're going about it, but I don't think <laughs> Queensland's one of the most regressive states when it comes to. Um, sort of there's still a lot, of, lot left over from the blk peterson era love him or hate him um so you know we're we're a lot more repressive uh than a lot of other more progressive uh southern states so that's that's kind of i'm a little bit somewhat concerned about that we'll see where it goes people have uh, alleged that extinction rebellion they're actually a globalist controlled opposition group and that <laughs> it's part of their goal to have the disruptive uh, protests so that more police state laws can uh, be passed that's what i've uh, heard a few uh, libertarians uh, hypothesize old theory hi neil neil's in the chat hi neil love you mate god bless um yeah no it makes sense Who's paying these people? You know, these people don't have jobs. Who's paying their fines? They've got money coming from somewhere. Well, we know that uh, um, Eric Serge Herbert, the the twenty year old uh, unemployed university dropout who astro surfs at friends' houses in Brisbane, was well, he been arrested eleven times? Uh, he's got uh, uh, mummy two hundred dollar fine. Yes. Whoa. Yeah, mummy's and daddy's uh, mansion that he lives at uh, on the well. That's I, 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 yeah that he can live at uh, on the Sunshine Coast, and of course his two twin sisters are uh, uh, international models who jet set around the the, the world, uh, posting on Instagram. Imagine the carbon footprint there. Yeah, absolutely. It's always it's always these people from upper middle class backgrounds that are trying to tell other people. And there was that footage um, from the UK yes. of those people dragging the dude that that uh, soy boy dude off the uh, yeah. off the train. But they're like, we just want to friggin' get home. You know, yeah. get the fuck out the way. And it was um, a multi ethnic uh, mob. Yeah, yeah. So you can't just say it was. Uh, well, uh, Extinction Rebellion. Even the Guardian admitted the the movement is too white and it needs to change. Yes, that was one of the uh, the criticisms of the far left, salty, yelling at racist dogs types. Sean Bedlam was having a conniption about how uh, how white and privileged they were to be set, uh, wanting to get arrested, um, <laughs> and that it was white savior complex, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, well, white, what's it called? White knighting or white man's burden? That's what's what yeah. it's called. So they they say they say to these people that if you're in a position of privilege. And you're white or whatever you should use that privilege for the benefit of pocs and then when they do that they get accused of being like that's it, you can't you basically just can't win as a white person right <laughs> and that's that's seriously that was one of the things that red pilled me away from being left wing when i was a uni student it was it was basically no matter what you do you're fucked you can't you can't win like someone's gonna find something to be like ah you're a evil you're an evil white man it's like i was on your side like what's what <laughs> the the liberal comedian uh, bill ma he did a good monologue uh, a couple of weeks back where he said uh white liberals you can't be more offended than uh the minorities person. because yeah. this is the thing they take offense on behalf of minorities when minorities or people Andrew of color Yang, yes like they most of them just are busy living their lives with their own families working nine to five to get constantly offended by whatever the white liberals uh, take offense of on their behalf yeah um back to eric herbert real quick i don't agree with the uh the the judge's ruling on that and i'll tell you why i'll tell you why they should have they should <laughs> They should have made eyebrow waxing mandatory for that kid. Have you seen his eyebrows? Hmm. Come on, man. As someone who, who also has quite bushy eyebrows, I'm telling you, kid, I'm telling you, you've got to get do something about those eyebrows. Hmm. Maybe uh, they, they could have ordered uh, Joel Jamal to uh, 
<laughs> wax, wax them, because have you seen his uh, eyebrow grooming? No, no, I haven't. Is okay. he another protester? No, no, he's one of the uh, the Sydney uh, young conservatives, uh, Samrat's right hand oh. man during the Christian Democrats turmoil. Right, right. Yeah, so watch one of my interviews with him, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Radio. Uh, but uh, well, because we've gone to the major tangent uh, here. Yeah, well, we, we well, went on a queer eye for the straight guy tangent. That was my fault. Yeah, but uh, I, 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 no, I want to keep going with the tangent because I want to mention <laughs> uh, Queensland uh, because you know that Anastasia Palaszczuk she was found to be in contempt of Parliament where after Fraser Anning's uh, maiden speech in the, the Senate when he was still a member of the uh, Catarist Australian Party yeah, because she cut the staffing budget for the Catarist Australia Party because well, they and the, condemn it. Yes, uh, so so that's. Uh, that's been found by the, the eth ethics committee to be an abuse of power and she had to apologize and it was in did you see the the courier mail today where Anastasia Pelche in the parliament during her apology she made this symbol <laughs> I did see that picture I didn't know I didn't know understand the context I thought she would have been uh, condemning anyone who uses that that hand sign Yes, I, I was surprised that um, yeah she 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 wasn't. Is she our guy? <laughs> well, so. well, if it, you you would have thought it'd be a case where the left would would eat their own. Oh well, she's wanting to be the the female Joe her. according to the, the the left, and so maybe maybe some of them, maybe Jonathan Suri and his supporters were like, "Ha, we knew all along, you know. <laughs> Let's see who you really are." <laughs> The thing that the far left does to ruin comedy is they, they take context out of everything. It doesn't mm. matter what context you say the N-word in, right? You just can't say it. Don't say so it, it here. It, does, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter in what context you're doing this. It makes you a, a white nationalist Nazi. I'm sorry, Anastasia Palaszczuk, but you're going down. We're going to meme you out of parliament. Oh, yeah. It's happening. Oh, yeah. So, yes, <laughs> I, I encourage uh, uh, Jonathan Suri and his uh, uh, supporters to, to, to get that uh, uh, fascist uh, premier uh, out, of, out of office. Yeah, let's get the ball rolling on that. Come on, memesters. Should have a little competition. We should have a meme competition on the page. See if we can get some, uh, some good stuff rolling with the... Uh, yeah. Get to it. Come on, Neil. I know you're good at this stuff. I know you're good at this stuff. You're the king, actually. Well, AO the king of yeah. AOC, memory. she's been photographed doing the OK sign as well. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. They're all in on it. But going back to actual real uh, abuse of, of power, which we were originally talking about, the New York Proud Boys. So uh, two of them ended up uh, being uh, charged. Uh, that was uh, Maxwell Hare and, and John Kinsman. And the, the Antifa uh, assailants, uh, they uh, refused to come forward or cooperate with police investigation. So it was a prosecution without any victims. And so they could only convict them of attempted assault, but the really serious charge they got them on was attempted gang assault because they were able to convince the jury that the Proud Boys were a gang. And so they've been sentenced today, both of them, to four years uh, in prison, which... I don't think that's initially what that gang legislation was supposed to uh, mm. be utilised for, but hey, that's that's what these snake lawyers do. Mm. That's when was they, that? That's that... What gets their rocks off, really, oh. I think. When was the, in state of Victoria, when did the, the last Apex uh, thug or uh, ambulance uh, assault no, get uh, uh, four, no, uh, four, uh, four years in prison? There, there actually has been a blitz on youth gang cri criminals uh, in uh, Victoria this week, 57 arrests, but we'll, we'll see, uh, obviously they've been arrested for the crime, we'll see if they, they do the time. Yeah, um, don't think there's room in, in prisons for them, so they'll probably just give them a slap on the wrist, a good behaviour bond, and say they were good boy, they didn't do nothing. Uh, it was the, it was society that yeah. made them like that. Yeah. So I've um, just taken you off the screen for a moment. So how dare you? Yeah, we're John, gonna we're gonna lose viewers now. Yeah, John Kingsman. Uh, he was uh, uh, one of the the Proud Boys uh, who was going to prison for four years. So he's got a wife and and four children. So they've that family has lost uh, a a father, 
figure for four years, that household and a primary source of income. So there's John there with his wife and, and three of the children. And the, the judge uh, said here, uh, who, who sentenced them, uh, Judge Mark uh, Dwyer, uh, said that uh, uh, he imposed this jail sentence because I know about history to know what happened in Europe in the 1930s and wanted to deter extremist rallies. So you, you're going to deprive a what was a, a nuclear stable family of a father for four years. Yep. Well, yeah, that's messed up. Um, we, I don't need to go into the studies of the impacts of single, uh, being raised by a single parent household and the negative impacts that has, but Hey man, I was raised by a single mother and I'm here, but I'm not going to say I didn't have issues from it. That's, <laughs> you know, but I'm here. Um, yeah, man. Um, that's, it's well, even free my boys, free yeah. my boys. Well, obviously like there's a lot of single parents that, that still do a good job, but the overwhelming it's a challenge. Ev ev evidence is that, uh, because most of the, the mass, uh, shooters that, that recently, uh, terrorized the United States come from, uh, single parent households, have an absent father. Yep. And even Barack Obama said that fatherlessness is the, the main uh, cause of um, you know, youth, uh, youth delinquency. Yes, indeed. Mm. Um, yeah, I actually was doing a bit of reading about that recently, and there's also people living on their own. Social isolation is another huge factor. Um, recent loss of employment is another huge factor for these um, lone actors. Um, really the main one is social isolation. Um, and it's also a lot of the people are new poor. It's another factor. Uh, so people who are of, have recently lost economic or social standing. Yeah. Um, and, and, and like I wrote about in my, in my Joker article, I'm going to plug that my Joker review that I wrote not two weeks ago. Um, yeah, if, if society can't just ignore the factors that are leading to these people acting out of desperation and like this outward expression of nihilism um, and enemy is what it is. Um, and it's uh, Durkheim, Emil Durkheim, one of the uh, forefathers of social science wrote extensively about the impact of the industrial revolution on um, people's roles within society and their relationship to having a sense of belonging within the social group. Um, you know, the difference between a person working in a field with 30 other people, um, you know, tending to the wheat to, you know, just people who don't even know their neighbours. You know, you've got neighbourhoods in, in cities now where majority of Australians live in cities now, um, and it has been for some time, and they don't know their neighbours, um, a lot of them. That's a, a large factor of like how happy people are. Um, but uh, I will I will finish. Um, the other factor is that doesn't get talked about is how many people in your street own their own home, how many people are renting, and how many houses are vacant because the owner doesn't want to rent them out. They just want to use them as an investment property. That's a huge problem that's not being addressed. I'm going to see the the Joker on on Sunday uh, evening. There, there's uh, there's going to be a bit of a, a movie night with with some of the the fans of the the Unshackled Soul on, on this uh, Sunday night show. But uh, I'll say this at the end of the show: I've got a a double feature on on Friday night's uh, show. So I'll fill you in on that. At the... You're gonna love it. It's mm. it's amazing cinema, not just from like for, in an artistic sense. It is the choreography. I think you'll notice. It's, it's reminiscent of what you'd expect from an opera. It's kind, it's kind of like an, an Italian opera in terms of its scale. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.